I've never bought a new car. Well, I bought one new car in my life. Okay. That's it. It still doesn't feel real that we're here to buy a car, and yet we are. But that thing we've always talked about where if a company makes an interesting car, we have to put our money where our mouth is Absolutely. and buy that car new to say, yes, we like this. We decided we'd do that. This is taking the ground now. Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. TV, web, and podcast. This is Everyday Driver. Yeah, and it didn't have this color at the launch. I know. It's the only thing it didn't have. They had every other color they're off. They had the dark blue. They had every other color they're off except for this, yeah. We're here at Mark Miller Toyota because we just go shopping on Saturday mornings, and we came across this new premium GR86. And we've talked about it for so much. I told Todd, we should just think about buying this. I mean, what do you think? I love how he acts like it was just sitting here unclaimed and we get to walk up it's unclaimed it. it's totally right. uh -huh. nobody sure. would buy this because yeah. uh mm -hmm. yeah it's just sitting here but anyway yeah we're just glad it's here but first there's paperwork there's no outside the steps we can observe the steps but there's no outside the steps you don't skip steps there's all steps that is the lowest mile car i will have ever climbed into oh yeah for sure well, the car has two miles yeah. mile three sideways it can't take you anywhere it's just freshly squeezed fob <laughs> that sounds terrible, <laughs> by the way. Okay, look at that. So here's a question. You know how on Porsches you've got to point the Porsche crest to the valve stem cap? What happens on Toyotas? I'll give oh, you I present to you. You're presenting me a Toyota cap. center cap. Wow. We're making it a thing. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Bottom of the ellipse towards the valve stem. I guarantee you Paul's doing this better than me. Push it in straight towards the valve stem cap. That's the new way to do it. That's the new official way to do it right there. Hmm. There you go. We're on a Japanese game show. Yeah, Whoever but then they're there. Half the interior unwraps first, gets the prize. <laughs> I can hear the crowd cheering us on. How did you do that? So, okay, here's, this is key. You know, if you've seen this show for five minutes, that the person's gonna do this better is not me. Oh. Paul's gonna do it with like pristine perfectness. And I'm gonna still be finding bits of plastic 10 years from now. So we probably <laughs> should just be following Paul. How'd you like to be the person that puts this on? Yeah, well. That's fun, huh? I feel like I've taken somebody's job and I'm not doing it well. If you do it wrong, you get a pie to the face. It's all a game show. If you've never unwrapped your own brand new car, there's something to it. There's a cathartic experience. This is when the bonding begins, is when you start in on things. The pedals are covered in blue. I didn't know the pedals came covered. That's craziness. This is incredibly satisfying. I can't even tell you how much I'm enjoying this. Look at that. I didn't even do it and that was satisfying. <laughs> oh, so satisfying. What's this guy? Uh, more stickers? Yeah, more stickers. Sticker on us. Good. Hey, and you should smell the smell. It's, oh, it's good. All those huh. plastics off-gassing. It's that new car smell. Update, 1221, 21. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. That's we should hang on to that. Yeah, actually. for sure. Here, put that in for the thing. Sure. Yep. Look at that. She's coming right off. Because see, this is super important to keep with the car. Here we go. Yeah, and go this way, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Perfect, perfect. I Look helped. at that. Look at me, I helped. <laughs> I was helpful. That's the Monroni, this is the key piece 
that you need for every car when you take delivery. Never throw this away, ever. Is it important? I'll let you make a little GR86 shrine somewhere. Yep, I'm gonna build it. Here's all the things. Cause see, this is when you're buying a used car, this is all the juicy stuff that you want with it. But no, this is the stuff, honestly, that when I buy that used car from that person, I go, this idiot kept all no, that stuff. No, I'm that's the idiot that keeps it. Clearly, we're seeing it firsthand now. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, the kick plates. Uh huh. We gotta get the, the glue off the kick plates. After you get that off the kick plates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. We don't need that. Do, would you like the barcode, Paul, with the VIN number on it? Yes. I figured you that. would. Yep. But I will say, when else in your life are you going to have a VIN number that is actually available to you in barcodes? You have to type 25 numbers or whatever. Got it. it. Okay. See, that also goes here on the back. I of the am going to trash that. Please do. Just so you know. Yes, that's fine. See, recording everything. Yeah, all right. See, it's on the Monroney. Got <laughs> it. Oh, right? my God. And then you keep okay. it safe right here. How long do you guys have today? We're going to be here a while, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is as scratch-free as it will ever be. You're right. You're on By the time we get home, that will already be ruined. Here we go. Well, you've been successful. Of course you have. Oops. This is what I imagined when we were unboxing a car. This is what I imagined. That's the sound you heard in your head? No. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to end up with a larger piece than you. I just want that noted. <laughs> Got it? Hey! All right. Look at that. <laughs> See, this is so satisfying. It's like it ripping really a Band-Aid off. It's much more satisfying ah. than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> we bought a car. We bought this car. Who did this? Even after the dealer did its required miles to make sure the car was okay, we are leaving the lot at 10 miles. I cannot believe we did this. When we drove the GR86 at the press launch in New York, we both were very impressed, but I owned the first gen, so impressing me was a short distance. Paul liked it so much, he was like, this is the car it always should have been. And so at that event, I told Todd, we have to buy one because we're going to want to drive this so much in comparison to almost everything else that we need to own it. And as we've talked about, we have encouraged you listeners on the podcast to go buy sports cars from car companies that we love and go buy them brand new. We paid full price and we're supporting our car companies to make enthusiast cars. It is the premium loaded out version. It was $34,000 out the door, everything. Tax, title, license fees. We got an MSRP, plus of course all the add-ons that normally happen with tax, title, and license and all that junk. But $34,000 is about as much as you could possibly get one of these cars for if you don't pay markup. Luckily, Mark Miller Toyota in Salt Lake does not charge markup, so we got it right at MSRP. You can buy one of these cars for this. Immediately getting into it, I'm reminded of the first time I got in at the Monticello Motor Club at the reveal. We were driving pre-production cars. I got in, I just knew we had to have this car. It's changed my own thinking because throughout your car life, throughout your entire life, your car progression should theoretically get more expensive and get better. And you decide on a GR86. What if you go down in price, you go down in size? That's what this is proving. We had a debate on our podcast and we talked about how we would spec one of these cars. And one of the things we didn't spec at the time was the Toyota installed paint protection film that comes on the nose. When we got around to actually ordering the car, we did put that paint protection film on it. We checked that box and I wish we hadn't. The paint protection film that Toyota puts on is just a strip. It's just a barrier above the bumper, the urethane bumper, on the beginning part of the metal and on the beginning part of the metal of the fenders, which is not nearly enough. If, if I were you and you were buying one of these cars, learn from that mistake of ours and actually get the whole front PPF'd properly and don't do the Toyota version. We wanted to have some protection, so we thought, all right, we'll do the factory one. That should be pretty good. It's not very good. We should have done a private one after the fact. This is only the second new car I've ever bought or been a part of buying. And there's already an emotional connection. It's Todd's, it's mine. 
we get to drive this all the time. And it's ours. And we're gonna drive it, we're gonna put wheels on it, we're gonna do all kinds of stuff with this. We've got tire sponsors that are stepping alongside us, we've got brake sponsors with our friends at Power Stop. And it's not just gonna be about how is it to own it, it's gonna be about let's put it in its place in the pantheon of cars that are beloved in the past and the cars that are really good that you can buy now, how does this thirty to $35,000 car hold up? Is it worth it? Does it hold up next to those icons? So here we are, starting our adventure as a separate series, but a car that we can drive against almost everything we can think of. This might not always win, and I'm completely okay with that, but what a contender. Let's find things to do with this thing because it is gorgeous and it deserves to be driven. That's why it was built. A big test for me is how does a car feel when I just use it like my normal car? And in daily driving, I have really been pleased with how endearing this car is. So here we are two weeks in and we're living with the car and there is zero buyer's remorse, none. But I didn't like the black wheels. Then we looked at the color of this car and we remembered that really cool BMW M2 CS that we had. That M2 CS color was a special blue and it looks pretty similar to this Neptune blue that's available now on this GR86. Once we got the Neptune blue and we saw it in person, we had a conversation about, I actually think gold wheels would look great on that. It actually does a lot to the styling you look around this car, it does interesting things. It makes it look more expensive, for one, but it brings out a lot of the characteristics that I like better on the second generation. Paul and I had a big discussion about which version of this car we should get. I kind of wanted to go for the base model because I thought we were going to change the wheels and tires instantly anyway, so what's it matter? They really are the same underneath. But Paul's a big fan of the ducktail. We like the extra tech that was involved in the upper level version. If you get an automatic, it has even more tech. This has blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert, which are actually useful things when you have a small car. And I admit, I do like the ducktail. I don't think it's necessary, but I do like it. The big thing we wanted to go for was this Neptune blue, and we are so glad to have gotten it in this color. And then, of course, that color combination does reference Subaru history, and this is underneath a Subaru. But the reason we did it was actually not the Subaru livery reference. We did it because we saw how great that specific color combo was and thought, this 86 can look pretty similar to that. And look where we ended up. See gold or bronze wheels on everything. And thanks to Nokian, they have donated Hakapolitas that we put on our gold rims. I'm in love with these Oz wheels. They are a half inch wider than the wheels that came stock. And the wheel and tire combination with big Nokian Hakapalita full winter tires is lighter than the stock wheel and tire combination. It's interesting having these tires on this car because these are heavier duty winter tires than we even need here in Park City. We're having a fairly mild winter. You can see the roads are almost completely clear. And I've realized that the tires are pretty spongy at anything above about 40 degrees. Now, that's always been the case with winter tires, but more so than other winter tires I've had, you can feel the tire block moving. They're definitely spongy and soft. And this car starts to feel like it does on the stock primacies. Now, the minute you get any snow, nobody has better traction than these tires. They are brilliant and they aren't even studded. And because we're driving this all the time and swapping back and forth, I'm reminded every time I get in it how refreshing it feels. The last one just felt cheap to me, and I know that's part of the appeal, but this one now feels refined enough that it's worth your dollars. Another thing addressed between the first and the second generation is the shifter feel. And I have to say, when I drive it subconsciously, all that kind of daily stuff we're talking about, it is easier. It does feel better. I remember when I had my first generation, I didn't like the shift feel enough that I had to put a weighted top on the shifter that actually helped quite a bit. This one in the stock configuration is easier to shift. It's just simpler to shift without thinking. It's so easy to heel and toe in this car. It's just so good. Oh. All right, that's a lot of noise. That's 7,000, okay? It's a lot of noise. Oh, that's 80. I should slow down. 
and I've been very concerned on the freeway about the level of noise this car produces. Why on earth, when you get the manual, there isn't a way to turn that off as a user is beyond me. Now, I know there's already procedures. You, you crack a panel off of that side of the car and you dig in there and there's like a telephone looking plug and you unplug that and I've seen it and I've considered it. But the more important thing is I dug into the manual. That's novel, isn't it? And I realized that Toyota has a long list of things you can customize on this car. And one of them you can do is to turn that system off. Unfortunately, to do that is a take to the dealer request. So now I'm just kind of intrigued. Does the dealer even know how to do it? This car was one of the very first ones of these our dealer had even seen. Do they have a procedure? Do they know how to plug into the brain and to turn that system off? Because it needs to be turned off. It shouldn't even exist in this car. But noise sells and making a speaker that replicates the engine noise, that's part of the driving experience. It will forever be. So leave your speaker plugged in. When you get one of these, just enjoy it for a while and really think, do I, do I like this? Could I live with it? Otherwise, I would prefer to not have the speaker and have the actual exhaust note. Maybe some headers, maybe a, an exhaust system on this, maybe later on. That's a terrible noise. That's a terrible noise. Oh, why is that on a driver's car? That's a, that's a terrible noise. That must be solved. Can the dealer solve it? Do they know how? Very curious to see. Let's address a few things I've heard online. First off is headroom. People are talking about this car is more cramped than the last generation, but I, I feel like I've got just as much room as I did in the last gen. I also haven't been in the last gen back to back with this. We have that coming. When we do, I'll have a better discussion for you about the comparative headroom of these two cars. But I have enough headroom. I have got enough legroom, shoulder room. This is a very comfortable car for big guys. The miles per gallon is another thing that a lot of people are talking about on this car is a reason the second gen isn't better. And I'm very confused by that commentary. I knew a lot of people with the first generation that were getting 28 to 30 miles to the gallon. I never did, but quite a few people at lower altitude were. I've driven this car in all the same roads in the same way that I had my FRS. My miles per gallon on that was 23, 24 if I was lucky. We have this car and we have averaged 23 miles to the gallon. So that means this car is getting almost the exact same MPG in my actual usage as the first gen did. And a few things I really don't like. On the don't like column is the turn stalks. Why are the turn signal stalks this difficult to use? Now, okay, it's not rocket science. I understand how to use them. But Toyota has put these turn stalks on that they, they're difficult to find the precise place to press them so that they only click three times versus press them too much and now the blinker's just on. It's difficult to get used to because you want to hit it too much and it doesn't have the proper detent to fight you and so you end up accidentally turning it all the way on and then to turn it off you hit it the other direction. So the good news here is that you can learn them and it becomes a subconscious thing like any other car. I wish they were different. They are kind of annoying. Luckily I'm settling in. The great thing about the GR86 though, is that it's not a second car. It's not a second fun car. This is the car you can do everything with. Right now, this car has just over 400 miles on it and it's brilliant. The driving experience just feels interesting and fresh every time I swap with Todd. You thought we talked about 86s before? Get ready, because this now is such an aspirational car and an attainable car for so many people because of the price. We checked almost every box just to see what's worth it, what's not. And again, the paint protection film was a bad choice. We should not have gotten that. Now that I've seen how Toyota does that, it's a ripoff. It, it should be ripped off because it's a ripoff. If you have questions, we'd love to hear your questions. If you have things you think the car is like, but you've never driven one or owned one, why don't you ask? We'd love to hear. Because that's the thing, when you're buying a new car, you think, did I do it right? Am I investing my dollars wisely? There is zero buyer's remorse here. I just knew it from the moment we sat in this, from the moment we drove them, we had to have one. We had to live with this car. Got one of these. Look how good this looks. It looks so awesome. Can't take my eyes off it whenever I see it.